Hello YouTube, and welcome to the next episode of Sega SG Awesome, Yamato. Yamato is a very early game for the SG-1000 developed by Sega. It's actually really early on. In fact, there is a recently found video of the 1983 toy show in Tokyo that featured a little bit of footage from the Sega booth that had Yamato in it, along with Congo Bongo. So with these two games being very back-to-back, -back, kind of hints at them kind of being around that time frame, being in kind of the new games at that point. It is a port of a Sega arcade game that's based off of the hardware made by Nichibutsu for their game K Crazy Climber. As a side note, Nichibutsu is an arcade manufacturer, I think at this point, mainly known for their strip Mahjong games, which kind of tells you a little bit about their legacy, but they do have one really old school game that's remembered fondly, at least in Japan, and that is Crazy Climber. It actually got a reimagined game of the same name on the Wii that was released a few years ago. And although Yamato is based off of the same hardware, it really has no resemblance to the game Crazy Climber whatsoever. Yamato is a very, very early, simple game that reminds me most of an electromechanical game. It reminds me way more of an EM game than any other game that I've seen on the SG-1000 so far. You take control of a very slow-moving ship, which is a Yamato, and you just basically move your aimer to take out the various ships and planes that just move in a straight line. It's very much like a shooting gallery. And the controls really do feel like an electromechanical game, which is kind of impressive for the controller. It's a game that I think would be really fun if you actually had the cranks and levers and all the stuff of an electromechanical game. Unfortunately, this version does not have those levers, and that really hurts the value of the game in my opinion, it's not a fun game for very long. This more than any other game except maybe Safari Hunt is good for about two minutes and then you're done. It's very much just a game, you go in, put your penny into it whenever it's at a penny arcade or a bar, you play it for a few moments and then you go have another drink. Or if you want the video game equivalent, you play a few minutes of this, then you turn it off and go play Beer Tapper. So in the game, you take control of Yamato, which was a humongous battleship, the biggest battleship, as is my understanding of it, at that time. And the Japanese basically put it on this suicidal mission where it was going off and trying to take out as many things as it could before it inevitably sunk. And that's what you're doing in this game, which is kind of a perfect plot for one of these early high score based games because in those games you're going to die whether it's missile command anything like that which missile command was very poetic in the fact that you are going to fail at some point in this game maybe not so much poetic but just matter of fact and, and it's kind of interesting because the uh, rounds move as the day progresses and if you last through so many rounds, you actually go to multiple days, so on and so forth. But eventually, you will die. The other interesting thing about this is, at least from an American perspective, it's kind of interesting because, in effect, you are playing the bad guys, at least from our perspective, especially probably in that time frame. From what I understand, there is a lot more kind of Japanese hatred in America. So I don't know, but I kind of imagine at that time, if you were an American playing this game, it may have even been like playing a Karate Kid video game where you were the Cobra Kai. I don't know, I find that kind of fascinating. This game is really difficult too, though. And it's difficult for a few reasons. One, the enemies are very difficult to hit. You have two cursors. One is your attack for the ships, the other is your attack for the planes. Now your air attack, it moves a little bit faster so as you push up on the control pad both aimers, both cursors are moving but the air moves a little bit faster, it has a little bit of a faster rate of change. So this allows you to actually cover the whole screen where the air attack covers the whole screen that it needs to, and sea attack still covers everything that it needs to as well. 
but you put the cursor on the enemies and a lot of times it feels like you're right on them or it looks like that you're right on the enemy and it just doesn't hit them. You kind of have to find the sweet spot on it and I don't necessarily know if that was done on purpose or if it's just that the hitboxes were very poorly designed. I do have to say some of the animation whenever you take out some of the enemies is satisfying, especially for a game this early and frankly bland. When we take out some of the ships, they'll catch on fire with one shot and then they'll blow up with the next shot. It's kind of neat seeing the ships that are caught on fire going across. But that's the biggest excitement really in Yamato. I really think that this game probably would have been better with just kind of a reskin almost. Like instead of the Yamato ship, make it a Cadillac, and instead of all of the enemy ships and planes, make them a bunch of dinosaurs. So you're just shooting dinosaurs in a Cadillac? Now that's a game I would play.